from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spell-binding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give you a glimpse of our country's diversity. Lord Murugan, the son of Lord Shiva in Hindu mythology, is a popularly worshipped religious deity in the southern part of India. Kartikai Deepam is a popular traditional festival where devotees offer diyas to the deity to mark his birth anniversary. Recently, the festival was celebrated at the Varapalani Lord Murugan Temple in Chennai city with great religious fervor. Take a look. India is abode of a number of festivals. While some of these festivals are celebrated across the length and breadth of the country, others are restricted to a particular region or community. Kartigai Deepam is a traditional festival celebrated in the southern part of India, mainly by the Hindu Tamils in states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. Recently, the festival was celebrated with religious fervor at the Vadapalani Lord Murugan Temple in Chennai city. To mark the festival, the temple premises was beautifully decorated with 8,000 electric lamps. Devotees thronged the temple and waited in long queues to seek the blessings of Lord Murugan. While different legends are associated with the festival, a popular one associates it with Lord Murugan or Kartike, son of Lord Shiva. It has been said that Lord Murgan was created from Shiva's third eye and had six primary faces. His six faces were transformed into stars which were later merged as one by Goddess Parvati. These six nymphs are regarded as a cluster of six stars named as Kartika constellation. Thus Lord Kartikeya has six faces and popularly known as Arumugan in Tamil culture and this festival is celebrated as the birthday of Murugan. Kartigai Deepam is a festival of lights observed by Hindu Tamils on the day when the full moon is in conjunction with the constellation of Kartika, which usually falls in Gregorian months of November or December. Sufism is a spiritual branch of Islam that emphasizes devotional prayer and the use of both words and silence. India has a long and varied history and many Sufi groups are still having devotional shrines in the country. One such example is the mausoleum of Hazrat Shah Jalal Shaheed in Patna, Bihar, which has long brought people of various faiths together. We have a report. Sufism has not only developed in India, but it has also become a model of peaceful coexistence and religious concord. The Darkah of Sufi Saint Hazrat Shah Jalal Shaheed, situated near the High Court in Patna city, has been acting as a sinecure of religious harmony for generations. People from far and wide visit the shrine to seek blessings of the Sufi Saint. <laughs> आके मानते हैं चाहे कोई भी जात हो हिंदू मुस्लिम सभी की मन कामना यहां से पूरा होता है लोकल से दैट अराउंड 80% ऑफ डेवटीज विजिटिंग द श्राइन आर हिंदूज हु हैव डीप फेथ इन द सूफी सेंट 
Majority of shopkeepers who have their shops outside the shrine are Hindus as well. It's been said that the Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, also is a regular visitor at the Darga. It is believed that saint solves all the problems and fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. I had heard a lot about this मेरे बहुत सारे मित्र वगैरह भी यहाँ पे आए थे उन्होंने कुछ परेशानियाँ थीं तो उन्होंने उनके साथ मेरी बातचीत हुई तो उन्होंने कहा जब एक बार ऐसे ही जाओ वहाँ पे और वो बहुत पहले का भी है और वहाँ पे बहुत सारी मन्नतें भी पूरी होती हैं तो मैंने भी एक 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 अंदर से एक इस चीज़ का हुआ तो मैंने कम होती हैं मैंने इस चीज को देखा है समझा है इस चीज को यहाँ तो आस्था है बड़े-बड़े लोगों को और जो भी यहाँ आए हैं उनको मिला है अब हम कहानी बताएं बहुत लंबी हो जाएगी लेकिन ऐसा है कि जो आए हैं उनको मिला है जो नहीं आए हैं उनको नहीं मिला ये हमारे हमारे सामने प्रत्यक्ष ऐसा हुआ है Since ages the Sufi saints like Saint Hazrat Shah Jalal Shahid has propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country and their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the threat of secularism. Now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. The first discussion session among G20 Sherpas was held in India's desert state of Rajasthan with the country Sherpa Amindap Kant presiding over the meeting. The Sherpa meeting, which was the first after India assumed its G20 presidency, was a four-day affair. There is a lot of crisis. There's geopolitics. There is a crisis of global debt. There's a crisis of climate finance. There is a crisis of global supply chain. Uh, vast amount of challenges in the world but i've always maintained that crisis is an opportunity and this is one of the greatest opportunities we've got uh, because we are putting together the agenda we should discuss we should bring in as the prime minister said we, our leadership will be very decisive following the discussion session the sherpas engaged in a cultural event in udaipur city palace where they wore traditional vests and vibrant turbans Kant also held bilaterals with the Sherpas of the UN and the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, where he discussed the scope for this year's G20. Three leopard cubs were rescued and reunited with their mother in India's western Nashik city. According to the Deputy Conservator of Forest in Nashik, Pankaj Garg, the three leopard cubs were found in Sugarkin Field near Parhardi village. The forest officials reached the spot, examined their health and kept them restricted to the area to help their mother come back to take them away. The forest official added that the mother had then located her cubs and taken them from the area. Indian actress Kajol promoted her upcoming drama film Salam Venki or Hello Venki in western Mumbai city. Kajol along with co-star Vishal Jetwa danced and interacted with thousands of fans as they appealed the audience to watch their film. The film is an adaptation of the novel The Last Hurrah by Shrikant Murthy and depicts the story of a mother and her son who is diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It shows how their lives take a turn when the son asks his mother to fulfill his last wish. It is based on the life of a chess player K. Venkatesh whose plea for euthanasia was rejected. Well, many people choose cremation as their final disposition for themselves or a loved one based on their religious convictions. The numerous religions and sects in India and their views and rituals on cremation are different from each other. 
and for the first time in India, the Telangana state government has created a model crematorium for people of different religious communities to be cremated together regardless of any discrimination. Respecting religious convictions is as crucial in death as it is in life for persons of religion. A new multi-faith crematorium has been built by the Telangana government for Hindus, Christians and Muslims. It is one of a kind initiative in the country that depicts true communal harmony. K.T. Ramarao, Minister of Municipal Administration and Urban Development, inaugurated a new multi-faith crematorium recently. इधर जो जो केसीआर जो ये स्पेशल गार्ड लगाया ना ये तेलंगाना में पूरा तेलंगाना में ये पहले बार मैं देख रहा हूँ इसमें अंदर गए तो ये पार्क है ऐसे अपने ये पिकनिक गए तो कैसे पार्क करते पार्क है ऐसे पूरा अच्छा पेड़ मना का अच्छा बना है और एक वह ये इसमें तीन मतों का हिंदी हिंदू मुस्लिम और क्रिश्चियंस I see a special guard in this special guard. And here, there are also people who have been living in the world. So, who have been living in the world, they have also been living in the world. So, these three and four are the first time in the world. The first time in the world. This unique cremation is eco-friendly and fitted with electrical furnaces to reduce environmental pollution based on the zero pollution philosophy. This model of cremation contains facilities for completing final rites according to Hindu, Muslim and Christian faiths in keeping with the state's objective of promoting communal harmony. All crematoriums have a dedicated office room, cold storage, prayer hall, toilet block, last journey vehicles and parking space as well as a sewage treatment plant and solar plants. मुक्ति घाट बोलकर यहाँ पे बनाया गया है ये तीनों हिंदू मुस्लिम क्रिश्चियन तीनों रिलीजन के इसका है तीनों रिलीजन को एक ही साथ करने ये आप देखे तो भी दिखता ये क्या बोलते हैं एक शमशान की कैसा रहता पूरा गंदा गंदा रहता एक पार्क के ऐसा बनाया पार्क के ऐसा बनाया बहुत अच्छी तरह से ये है बनाया बोलकर नहीं ये मेंटेन भी वैसे ही करते बोल के हमारे के टी आर साहब बोले है Cremation is particularly important in India's religious traditions. This crematorium is a great illustration of how cremation for Hindus, Muslims and Christians may be done without bias or discrimination. This brings different religions together. India is famous for displaying cultural and traditional liveliness via its traditional arts and crafts. Every region in India has its own unique and traditional forms of art. Art forms of the southern part of India are a beautiful show of the region's culture and lifestyle. Mandala art is traditional art form where geometric patterns and symbols are used to create art. Recently, a 17-year-old girl displayed her mandala drawings at an exhibition in Hyderabad. Religious figures and spirituality have always been associated with art. A number of renowned painters and artists have presented their creativity by putting on paper their idea of religious figures and spiritual beings. Recently, a 17-year-old school student named Navya Agarwal presented her paintings on spirituality that caught eyeballs. Through divine symbols, I represent uh, an exhibition of artworks which are based on the theme spirituality. So uh, I practiced other art forms from an age of five. I've uh, been going to different workshops and I still experiment with uh, different mediums. But during the phase of lockdown, when I got time to spend it spent with myself, I explored and experimented mandala to be my medium of communication. As in personality, I come forward as a very spiritual person and I found mandalas to be my medium of communication to express my ideas towards different spiritual concepts. Agarwal presented her own ideas on spirituality and religion by painting them on canvas in the form of mandala art. 
Her artworks included paintings of Hindu gods and goddesses like Goddess Durga, Lord Ganesha, Lord Shiv, and more. Agarwal has been practicing a number of art forms from a tender age of 5 and keeps on experimenting with a number of different mediums and forms of art. The details she does in her paintings and the features of the goddesses was uh, more than what anyone could expect. And um, whatever uh, concepts she takes is far beyond anyone can think. So that has inspired me a lot. Religion is heavily present in every medieval and ancient art collection and it is quite praiseworthy to see youngsters of today to be still very well connected to their roots. And at the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Large and loud crowds of fans in football stadiums can be overwhelming for people with sensory requirements such as autism and other associated disorders and a barrier to attending World Cup matches. But this year in Qatar and for the first time in World Cup history, sensory rooms in three stadiums are offering guests with special needs new opportunities to experience the tournament live. A sensory room, for those of you who don't know, is a place where we can bring autistic children and adults or associated uh, neurodiverse disabilities to come and enjoy a football match in an environment that feels safe and secure. The uh, place itself is set up to uh, give them activities, uh, give them calm, uh, relaxation and opportunity to get away from some of the stimulation in the match that they could find challenging otherwise. Nested in the upper part of the stadium and with a large front window, the room in the Al Bayt Stadium is lit with fiber optic lights and offers different sets of specialized equipment. Fans can choose to sit on dedicated seats in front of the room to watch the match amid the crowd, but they also have the possibility to come inside for more quiet moments and to use equipment designed to provide comfort and calm, such as touch boards, weighted blankets, and soft areas. Tokyo Metropolitan Government in Japan is operating new subway train on Mita Line since May. The Mita Line runs from north to south in Tokyo. A number of locals commute on the local trains every day and the number of commuters is constantly increasing year by year. The train currently has only six cars that were launched around 30 years ago. In order to fulfill the increasing number of passengers and ensure comfortable transportation, the Tokyo Metropolitan Department has decided to launch a eight-car subway train with modern design and facilities. あの、Tokyo Metropolitan Department is constantly improving its facilities to improve the lives of its citizens. It is the reason why Tokyo is continuously progressing and is one of the most developed cities in the world. Hundreds of Santas brought a sea of red to a small German town over the second advent as the annual fun run converged once again on Mitchendorf. And the red-robed and clothed participants are not only running to keep the chill out but to earn their mug of traditional mulled wine handed out by bystanders. Anyone dressed up in a Father Christmas costume is allowed to take part. Yeah, I love the Nikolaus love with, uh weil es hier einfach eine super nette Atmosphäre hier in Michendorf ist. Ein lustiger Lauf, weil alle verkleidet sind. Lauter rote Läufer um herum. Es sieht einfach wunderschön aus. According to the local municipality, this is the 14th time the run has taken place. 
as it always does on the second advent. The race has been on hiatus because of the corona pandemic, with some 900 participants turning up this year for a resumption of festivities. Runners were judged by a variety of distances ranging from 2, 5 to 10k and judged in different categories separated according to competition, gender and age groups. The start and finish were both at the Michendorf Community Centre with mulled wine or a chocolate Santa available for all. Japan's largest IoT Internet of Things exhibition Kiatic 2022 was recently organized with top manufacturers from all around the country, participating in it and showcasing their latest technology. Fujitsu is a leading Japanese firm that manufactures electronics. In 2021, Fujitsu announced a new business brand titled Fujitsu Yuvanse, which is a solution to make a better impact on the environment, society and economy by transforming its business. These products that are being developed with the help of latest technologies are improving the lives of the people and are helpful in solving all kinds of social problems. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.